Okay, close enough. All right, uh, this is somewhat related to my talk yesterday. Um, we'll look at the, uh, so part of this is uh, based on the 12-2 slippage that was somewhat evident early in the release cycle already. And I uh, put this together a while back and Sasha provided some really good input, so I'm not taking all the blame here myself. Um, and with that, uh, basically there's a relatively short presentation and then the rest should pretty, be, pretty much be discussion. And we will also have a boff about the release schedule at um, noon, I think, let me check. Um, yeah, at noon in the wharf room. So anybody is interested, please, uh, you know, we can continue this discussion there as well. And with that, let's get going. So I'll give some background. I'll propose some solutions. Uh, of course, there are some that will say, but whatever. Uh, I will explain why I think we need to change. Uh, I will make some transition proposal, and then we can discuss it from there. Okay, uh, what is the current situation? Well, on one hand, the distribution, we want more packages, right? We want to be whatever, have the most packages available. Hopefully, we'll find more users that way. Uh, but in the end, who is responsible, right? So we want more packages, and then we put packages in, and we end up with 500 people claiming to be maintainer of a package. That does not work, okay? Take a look at AA base. So uh, who is really responsible, right? And this list goes on and on and on and on. So if you, haven't, uh, if, if you have a problem, whom of these many people would you contact, okay? Um, and there are many more packages like that. Basically, all of our packages look like that. We have tons of people. Uh, hey, guys, the boff is later. If you're interested in chatting, then feel free to take it outside. Um, so basically, any of the packages have this problem, OK? And so nobody's really responsible, and um, that is a problem, OK? As ours linger, everyone turns off their notifications because in the end, they're just they just become spam because you get pack, you get notifications from packages you don't really care about. Um, problems with packages are left unaddressed because, well, nobody notices, right? Or there are so many people on the list that everybody thinks, well, somebody else will fix it, right? So we pass the buck, okay? And if anybody really has specific questions, you don't know where to go. You really don't. You end up sending it to a mailing list and hoping for a response. Uh, that system is just broken. So let's clean it up, okay? Uh, basically, a proposal is that any package should not have more than five maintainers, maybe even three, okay? okay. These, these people are all marked as maintainers, they're all marked as buck owners, and they cannot disable notifications for the packages that they own, okay? They get them. When the package breaks, they get a notification. If it breaks in factory, they get a notification, and, they, and those can be turned off, okay? Also, those people will get the submit requests, okay? And all the inherited from the project, all of those go away. The project maintainers have no direct responsibility of the packages, except for if they're one of those five people, okay? Um, and then a develop project should have, you know, maintainers that can step in if, you know, one of these package maintainers is on vacation or away for a while. Uh, they can step in, but they should not in general do that, okay? In general, project maintainers should keep their fingers off the packages. They should really just follow people along and say, uh, here, your package is broken, please fix it, right? They shouldn't go in and, and do all the work themselves. Uh, you know, maybe we should have 10 for 500 packages or in, in a project or even fewer people and probably cap it at 25 because once you get to large numbers again, you go to uh, somebody else who will take care of it, right? Um, 
Again, you know, they can accept SRs, but in general, they should not, okay? Uh, they can fix build issues, but again, in general, they should not. It should really be those three or five people that are on the package. Um, the, pa the project maintainers themselves would not show up as in the users list, okay? They are not shown. So they're basically anonymous. Um, and they ha basically have the responsibility to keep everything building. So they, they really just need to run after people and say, your package is broken, go fix it. And nothing else, right? And they also have to give the package maintainers a chance to review the submit requests, okay? So today, often what, I've, what I hear every now and then is, well, I got a submit request for my package, and then the, the, some guy in the project who also has the authority to accept the submit request just accepted it before he even had a chance to look at it, right? So project maintainers should not do that, right? They should give the guy who really owns the package, of course, that only works when we have people that really own the package, a chance, at least for a couple of days, to review the submit request. Okay. Um, then, of course, we have now two people, previously only Kulo, now we have two, that are only focused on the integration, basically on the distribution, okay? Um, these should also not be listed in any package, okay? Again, it's the same with the project maintainers. They don't really show up as maintainers of individual packages unless they actually do maintain those packages, okay? But today, uh, Kulo and some other people, they show up as maintainers on every package. Makes no sense, okay? Um, they can help out. Obviously, they have the expertise. If a package maintainer really gets into trouble, then yes, those people should be asked for help. No question, okay? Um, but again, in the end, this should be a reasonably small group. And if we follow through with all of this, this will actually make their job a lot easier, okay? So, um, with this, okay, we can also, we need to look at posting more tracking information, okay, packages, updates in develop projects, reviews in develop projects, and so on. Um, and, you know, we for forward the packages to factory. Again, I mean, this goes back to what I said yesterday. Sometimes you end up with a package being broken in factory and building in the develop project, and then people chasing after things when they're not really broken. They appear to be broken in factory, but they're not necessarily really broken. So, you know, when people are responsible, then this is not so easily forgotten, that you put the new package into... Uh, into the develop project and then you forget about it and it's broken in factory, right? But if you really only have a small group, three or five people maintaining one package and then that works easy as well, okay? Um, and then, you know, it is publicly recognized because there's only a small number of people on each package, then they get credit for it and not, you know, the credit just gets distributed among 100 people when nobody does anything, right? In the end, everybody passes the buck, okay? And we could also rate development projects, right? With a rating, A plus or B, right? Depending on uh, how many failures they have over time. And that would encourage the project maintainers to follow up with the guys in their project that maintain the packages, okay? So this would encourage project maintainers to really just follow up and keep their fingers out of the packages and let the package maintainers do the packaging, okay? Uh, what I expect from all of this, okay, we get more people that are more engaged in the process. Uh, we get fewer broken packages because people actually feel responsible for what they're doing, okay? Uh, using packages via link or aggregate should be more reliable because packages are in better shape, okay? Um, and we have a better, more stable environment to work on, okay? And factories should be more stable, stable as a result of it, okay? And we should have less trouble with time-based releases. With, in the end, this is what we have, right? We decided on an eight-month release cycle. It's a time-based release. And then in the end, because nobody really feels responsible for their packages, we end up slipping, right? But if we have responsibility, we should have less trouble with that. So, 
But what about my freedom to mess with whatever I want? Well, use your home project. You can build in your home project whatever you want, nobody cares. Development projects, feed factory, we care. We need to keep the quality up, okay? Or if you have a development project that you feel and you don't want to do it in your home project, set up a testing on or unstable project and then you can fiddle around in there with whatever you want. Uh, now you have to be responsible. Yes, this is what we want, right? Um, we do have a distribution that we want to release as a community. We want to have high quality. And that means that people that maintain packages need to be responsible for those packages, okay? Um, and yes, you are a volunteer, and we cannot tell you what to do. That is correct. However, if you want a feed factory, then you need to play by the rules. And I'm proposing that we change the rules, okay? And um, why would we want to do this? So, well, again, the development projects feed factory. And factory becomes our distribution. It gets released on an eight-month cycle. We don't want to slip the schedule. We want to have high quality, and we want to have a good development environment to work in, okay? We need to be more responsive to SRs. I don't think there's a, a way to count the number of mails to the factory list where somebody says, my SR has been sitting around for whatever. And again, it is mostly for projects where you have 500 people on the list that are maintainers, and nobody cares, right? So, and we want to scale better, okay? Yes, it's not easy, okay? Um, the transition will not be easy. I think we just have to, you know, bite the bullet, do it, kick everyone off the list, and let people claim it, okay? Empty packages get listed somewhere on some site that we have temporarily, and then people can claim it and say, yes, I will do this, yes, I will do this. Um, this does not necessarily apply to all packages because we know, like the GNOME team, there are some people that we already know, so they can be on those, on those packages. Um, but for many, for many projects, for many development projects, we don't really know. And so for those that are not marked, we just kick everybody out and then they can claim the package back. Um, and everyone marked as a maintainer gets an email uh, in the transition and say, this package is now cleared, and if you still care about the package, go back, sign yourself back up. And when we, re when we reach the maximum number of three or five, whatever we decide, then nobody else can claim the package. And when a maintainer goes away, then another one can join that group. Um, yes, we might need a few temporary scripts for this and, you know, some scaffolding around it. And with that, shoot. Go ahead. Do we have microphones somewhere? Oh, this one. Okay. <laughs> Great. So the web UI displays for a package, as you showed, not only the package maintainers, which is a relatively short list for AAA underscore base, but it also shows all the project maintainers. And I think that's just a bug in the web UI in, the, in there. Um, go ahead. Uh, actually, it's a fantasy like this, but uh, whether it's still there, it's still be playful. But I think the, the, the point remains true. Like, we need to, yeah. Like, we need to somehow reduce the amount of guys that are listed there to, I don't know, increase responsibility so that, I don't know, we all, we have some people we can point to like when it's not working. And in the previous releases so far, I think it ended up that always the same large, a small set of guys end up fixing everything in order to get the release shaped up. So even though there may be better examples, I don't know, AA based personally, but I think the point remains true. Yeah, so just to, to reiter reiterate, this is just an example, right? And yes, there was one person marked as a true maintainer, but there are many packages where nobody is marked as a maintainer, right? And they're all inherited from the project. And now if you make the project maintainers go away from that list, then it's very obvious that really nobody takes care of the package, right? 
and even those that are marked as maintainers, I'm not certain that they really do maintain, right? So I'm all for this, what you presented very, very clearly. But uh, I think there's, there's one pa um, part missing. This is the flow of in information. Uh, to give you an example, let's say someone checked in a new automake. Um, I think we should have a uh, kind of RSS feed or on, the, on some web page, okay, here's a uh, new automake. This was changed. This is how you can fix your uh, package if it, if it breaks. This is an in information. This is, at least for me, very often missing. But I don't know why it, why it broke, so what, what, what was causing this. And I, I um, mentioned it yesterday. I'd like to see somehow a backlog. Okay, what, when, when, when did the breakage start and what, what changed from an underlying pers pers perspective or um, in information about my build de de dependencies? Not, not only my package breaks, but okay, these were the changes in your build dependencies. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's a feature request. I, I agree, we need, we need that information, and I talked to some other people, and yeah, basically, that is missing today. So we, we you know, the, the build service team really have to implement that. So. Hi, yeah. Um, one problem I'm seeing is that sometimes there's really some catch-all projects. So, I mean, I'm maintainer of a few projects like base system and, or, maybe not just a user, not a maintainer, but it doesn't matter, and base system or hardware or even some multimedia telephony because I once fixed some build bug in Linphone or something like that. And now I'm a maintainer or a user of that package, uh, of, of that project, and I get submit request to, to review for packages I know nothing about because, I mean, especially base system, I mean, it's... Well, there's very much in there, and I wouldn't dare to, to accept or decline the new version of, of HW Info or something like that because I don't, have, I don't know anything about that. So, obviously, I get lots of those emails, and I start to basically read them, well, once a month or something like that. So, if I'm, if I'm lucky, I, I even catch those that are relevant to me, but most of the time they either have already been accepted by somebody else or rejected and so I'm, I don't think having more projects is actually the way to go but like the, the setup like it is now is obviously not the way to go. Right, but you're describing the problem that this is supposed yeah. to address, right? In the, in the end, so taking you as an example, you would only then maintain those packages that you care about and you would no longer be listed as a project maintainer. So yeah, all those submit a, requests yeah. of those projects disappear from your inbox. Yeah. And only you know five or 10 people that are actually project maintainers, only those will get those messages. Yeah. And that would be a very good thing. So that's really important that we get this. I mean, I mean, I'm probably one of those who is actually caring for stuff simply because, oh, that's an interesting problem. So I'll look at it. But I guess most of the people are actually really only looking at their stuff, and it's important that we let them focus on their work. I mean, it's even for me, I'm sometimes just reading this mailbox where this gets filled in. If we're lucky, I'm reading it once per week, so yeah, there's a lot of noise that needs to be filtered out. Definitely. Right, and, and this is really supposed to, you know, filter a lot of the noise, and again, then we can, everybody can turn on their notifications and they actually mean something, right? Today, many people turn their notifications off yeah. because it is, you know, overwhelming, right? I mean, I mean if, you, if you're on the Perl list or Python, yeah. Ruby, <laughs> anything, right? You get, if you, if you had mail on for every time a package breaks, you'd have a thousand messages a day. Yeah. And, you know, that's just not, that's not realistic, so, Therefore, I mean, we need to be know, careful to not piss some people off, basically, by now taking away something they had. So we need to announce this and maybe make sure if somebody is really interested, well, then he probably would have noticed. But if people are interested and, and that they have a chance to get back on that list if they really want to, but I guess 
that's a small problem because probably most will be happy to, to, to get off the, the big lists. So. so a little bit of, this might cause social problems so that people say, oh, I've always been maintaining and now they've kicked me out of this list and yeah, but well, I don't know what to do about that. It might also not be a real problem. I'm not sure about that. You I might think, need to be careful. Actually. I think the most easy thing in order to f find out whether someone is really interested is just mail them. That's what I usually do. Like um, if I encounter some, some issues or I see a lot of guys there, I just mail them all and ask who's responsible. And if no one replies, they're all out. Yeah, I mean, you know, some, it, it is, we're a large community, right? It is almost impossible to do anything without offending somebody. Uh, and I'm sure that, you know, if we create, if we clear all the lists um, of most packages, yes, there will be people that will be offended. But they have the chance to go back in and reclaim their package that they love so much, right? And that's it. And, but that doesn't mean that they have to be project maintainers, right? In the end, we want to have a few select people to do project maintainers and not everybody who has a package in a project get every email. Klaus? Oh, I think in the current situation, we need bold steps. And this is a pro pro proposal for, for uh, such a step. And if someone complains, so what? Talk, talk is cheap and action counts. So if someone com uh, Complains, then steps in and fixes his package and helps out. Fine, then he is a maintainer. Wonderful. I just wanted to mention that there, we need to be careful. So not to, I just want us to be careful and think about this might have also a social aspect. And yeah, I'm not against just. It that. needs to be announced properly and reasoned, and, right. and we need a transition period, so not like. We do it tomorrow, um, yes, but change right. is But is in, in the end, what we're doing today, what we have is we're fighting a people problem, right? And it's in everybody's nature, everybody. I included myself, right? When I see 500 people on the list and I get an email for something, then I say, well, somebody else will take care of it. But if there's only two other people on the list with me for a package, then, well, it's one of us three, and those guys I hopefully know, right? And then we communicate, and we're a small team, and it will actually get done, right? I mean, uh, you know, 20 packages or so I maintain, I really maintain. But then, so when then a project maintainer goes in and says, oh, there is a submit request for whatever package, and I'll just pull it in, well, I'm not happy about that either. So changing the system, I think, will, will make our packages better, will help us work together better, and we'll have a better factory in the end, and Kulo doesn't have to pull so many rabbits out of his hat every week. And it, and it needs some more infrastructure, like uh, um, seeing that the package gets un, un, unmaintained, even though there's a group of three people, but they don't care, then that we actively pull this maintainership away from them put up the um, package for others to uh, claim, and if no, no one steps up, then this package gets removed. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Anybody else? So the, uh, one thing I'm just thinking about is uh, maybe the granularity of some of the projects is wrong. So for example, I'm a maintainer in uh, Kelly Distro Factory, and I think that works just fine. So there's a group of people that care about all the packages, and I don't see the, the necessity for an additional overhead of having myself added to 250 packages that which are in this developed project, because it's in the end one stack that works together. So in this case, I don't see what your proposal brings. However, I'm also a maintainer in, for example, file system, because I happen to package one of the file system tools, which I care about. But I don't care about all the other 30 file systems that are in there. And I often get mails about file systems that I don't even know what they do, just because they happen to be in this devil project. And I think that's the actual problem that you're trying to address, that there is, there, at once in time, there was a devil project set up where 
someone thought, okay, it's, it's a cool idea to have all the file systems in one devil project, but it's, it's so confused that there's not one person who can cover all the file system because it's a so diverse um, topic. Maybe the solution for those projects would just simply be that we split it up into a file system, column, whatever, uh, and have actually then a group of people caring about particular file systems. Yes and no. I mean, in the end, the idea is that the project maintainers, unless they're listed as a package maintainer, a specific package, they basically keep their fingers out of the packages. Their job is really to run after people and say, go fix your package, right? And yes, if they're listed as one of the package maintainers in, in that project, that's fine, okay? Then they, then they take care of that package. But as project maintainer, you have responsibility to make sure everything builds, but that doesn't mean you need to go fix it. Actually, we don't want you to fix it. We want the guys that are listed as package maintainers to fix it. I also, I also think that the solution to your problem is just add, remove yourself from the project. Just be a package maintainer. And that's, that's actually the preferred way of doing things because you know, you don't have to care about all the other file system packages. You can just, if your tool is, you know, separate enough, then you can just care for that. But this is what we are telling people since four years now. And I think we should go further and really remove per de by default people from projects. We just ch check the activities in the last four years and see well, you never touched anything but this package, so we add you to this package and remove you from the project, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Every, really, there should be a small group of people that look after a project and not, you know, everybody, almost everybody that maintains a package in a, in a project is also on the, on the project maintainers list. That makes no sense. Again, it is, we need to differentiate the responsibility. Package maintainers do packages, and that's what they do. And if, if one of those package maintainers wants to also be on the project and run after other people to make sure that they get their stuff in, in order, that's great, okay? But we don't, we should not expect project maintainers, um, you know, or even, I mean, then at the integration level, it goes, it goes up, right? Then Stefan has to do it at some point, right? We don't want that. It makes no sense, right? Because then everything hangs on one or two people and, and that doesn't work. It just does not work. But I guess it's also okay to just have projects without actual project maintainers. Because if it's just a bunch of packages, all the, I mean, the, all the stuff the project maintainer has to do is add another build target for if we have another distribution, or even not, right? So because it's on factory. So it's okay to have projects without project maintainers, just with a bunch of package maintainers. I think. Yeah, I, potentially that would be fine. We'd have to see how that works out. So who, who is going to implement this change? Good question. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, there do not seem to be any very strong objections, so I think, you know, uh, I, I'm in Nuremberg next week, so I think we'll sit together with Kulo and the bill service team and whoever else wants to, and then we'll, we'll talk about how we go forward. I mean, actually, we're already doing this, but not with a big, bold move like we were just proposing, so we don't, I don't know, touch every project, like it's just once you see it. So it's already happening, I think. And it's a good thing. Yeah, and, and you know, now we'll just do it with more force and we'll go faster, and that's it. I mean, a similar reminder, slightly unrelated, uh, because I see once in a while when new OpenSUSE releases uh, come out, check back your enabled repositories in your projects. Maybe you don't have to build anymore for 11.4 or SLEE 10. Saves us some build cycles. And that would be a project maintainer's responsibility, actually, to, to look after such things.
All right. Cool. So again, there's a buff at noon. We will talk about the release schedule, and we can also, um, you know, continue discussion about related issues to that. And uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you.